This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Let's talk about the best Lightroom export settings for your wedding photography. I get asked all the time, what are the best export settings in Lightroom for wedding photography? So let's go through my workflow. Your exports and the quality of your photos actually start out in the editing. So we have to focus on that for a quick moment. While I'm in Lightroom editing beautiful wedding photos, there's one thing that I do to my photos that most people may not think, which is not adding sharpening to my photos. For whatever reason, I have found that sharpening works better on the JPEG stage, so after I have exported the photos. Keep in mind when you're editing photos, you're really not making changes to the raw file itself. You're giving directions to Lightroom for what to change on the photo before it changes it into a JPEG. So generally, I'll come in, use my natural fields preset, shameless plug, then I'll go ahead and make my adjustments to exposure and white balance until I get the photo where I would like it to be. This is where I'll also do any cropping, I'll do some AID noise, all of this stuff I'm gonna add into my photo. After all those settings are in, you'll see that I leave my sharpening set all the way to zero. I feel like sharpening looks so much better on the JPEG stage. So this is my number one tip. Do not sharpen inside of Lightroom. I also will say do not add any post-production like grain or do any touch-ups inside of Lightroom either. But we'll talk about that later because it's a part of my whole process. Forgot to add a, a little bit of magenta in there. <laughs> so now that I've finished my photo, it looks good. I'm ready to export it. Now I can get directly into my export settings. So generally when I'm doing a wedding, I'm doing multiple photos. So I'm just going to select a couple of photos here rather than just the one. Then in the bottom left, we're going to hit export. And this is where we'll get to our export settings. The export settings section is broken into different parts. There's only a couple of them that I usually will change, and it depends on what I'm exporting for. So to start out, let's talk about exporting for your couples and for delivery. Now, first we're dealing with our export location. This is just where you want to export it. If you're not familiar with backing up your photos, where you should export your photos to to make it easier for yourself and just having a nice file hierarchy, I'll leave one of my backup videos up here. And if that doesn't do it for you, let me know in the comments below and I'll make another video talking about how I have my file hierarchy built out. So we're not gonna focus on this. For now, I'm just gonna go to the desktop for this video, I guess. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could put it in a subfolder as well. So we have a lot of options there. I can also rename my files, which I normally don't do unless I'm actually putting them on my website or something of that sort. So we'll leave that blank for now. Video, I'm actually gonna close this because I generally do not deal with videos in Lightroom. But just so you know, you actually can deal with your videos inside of Lightroom as well. I have not done that, but if you want to see more on it, let me know and I'll look into it. Now, here comes our first section that's important. This is our image format and generally you're gonna be exporting a JPEG. JPEG's probably the easiest type of file. It's what everyone can use on their phones and on their computers. So you wanna select JPEG there and make the quality 100%. We want this JPEG looking as best as possible. And don't turn on HDR, I just, just leave that off. HDR just muddies up things when it comes to the photos and how you're dealing with them. Next up is our image sizing. This is the next most important spot on where you're gonna be making changes to your export. For delivery, we wanna set this to no resize to fit. You see, I have it unchecked. And then resolution is gonna be 300 PPI. Now, the reason we want our resolution set to 300 PPI is this has to deal with printing photos. These are gonna be the photos that we're delivering to our couples, and it's gonna be the files that we're using to print photos. If you have your PPI too small, it's not gonna scale well when you're making larger photos. So definitely have this set to 300 PPI. It is gonna make your files larger, but that is not that much of a problem because this is what we're actually exporting for our couples. On top of that as well, if you're concerned about your JPEGs being huge and eating up all the space on your external hard drives, you definitely need to look into JPEG Mini. It is a great program that actually lets you make the file sizes smaller for your photos so you save space. 
This is also amazing when it comes to putting your photos up on your website, which is absolutely important. So 300 PPI, make sure that's set and do not resize your photos. Honestly, the only time you're ever gonna need to resize your photos is if they're way too large, but that's only happening if you're doing the Brenizer technique, which if you're not familiar, I'll leave a video of it linked up above. And if you just want your photos to be smaller, which we'll be talking about in just a moment. Next up is the output sharpening. This is a little bit of sharpening added on the JPEG stage, so I do turn this on. Like I said again, sharpening on the JPEG stage, in my opinion, looks way better. I don't know why, I, I really don't know why, <laughs> but it looks so much better. So there's different options here. We have for matte paper, glossy paper, or screen. Now, if you wanna be very specific about where your photos are gonna be going, I would highly recommend choosing matte paper for your prints. But overall, if you just want your files and they're gonna look decent regardless, just sharpen for screen. I generally leave it to standard, mainly because I have no sharpening on my photos in the first place. After that, we have options for metadata, watermarking, so on and so forth. But one thing I do as well in my export is post-processing. Post-processing is gonna include more sharpening, grain, and actually retouching my photos. But we'll look at that at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around. So again, real quick, let's review exporting for actual delivery. After you've picked where your photos are gonna export to, you wanna set the file to JPEG, 100% quality. Image sizing will be the full size at 300 PPI. Output sharpening for screen standard. And those are all your settings to export for your actual wedding couples. Now, the question that usually comes up though is how do I export for social media for my website? Because we all know on your website, you want everything to move quickly. And if you have these extremely large files on your website, everything's gonna load slow, which is gonna be a extremely poor experience for the people viewing your website. So now let's talk about exports for social media and your website. Again, after choosing my photos, I'm gonna go hit export and choosing the location is going to be the same as any other. But now we wanna go down and make a couple of different changes. File is still gonna be a JPEG and we're still gonna keep it at 100% quality. While this does add to our size, it's not gonna be the biggest factor. So we don't wanna change this at all. Keep your quality set to 100. Next up is gonna be our image sizing. This time we do actually wanna resize our image. So I'm gonna click resize to fit. And we're just gonna do the long edge. I found it's much more easier to just to deal with the long edge than trying to figure out the proportions of your photos. By doing the long edge, it's just gonna truncate the whole photo together based on the longest side. For this, we wanna to go to 2,500 or 2,000. Somewhere in that range is good. Also, we need to change our PPI. Again, these files are not being printed, so we don't need the PPI to be as super large as it is. So we're gonna switch this to 72. So 2,500 on the long edge. So that's regardless of it's horizontal or vertical, whichever one's the longest side, it's gonna go down to 2,500 pixels. And then also we're gonna do 72 PPI. This will make sure our file is not extremely huge, but still great quality for social and also our website. After that, we're still sharpening for screen. Sharpening after on the JPEG stage, again, in my opinion, is the best look for your photos. So we wanna keep that the same. And then at the end of it, we're still gonna jump into our post processing. So as a quick review, again, the main settings you wanna set for exporting for social is gonna be file is a JPEG at 100% quality, and then resize your image to 2500 on the long side and 72 PPI. These are hands down the most important settings and it's gonna help you save size on your photos. Also, like I said, again, after you've exported your photo and dealt with all that, throw them into JPEG Mini. This way you can make the file sizes even smaller and speed up your website while people are viewing your portfolio. And since we're talking so much about websites, we can't forget to talk about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. 
Squarespace is an online platform to help you easily and quickly build your website. If you don't already have one, in my opinion, it's one of the best places to host your portfolio. With amazing templates and an easy to use UI, you're gonna get an amazing look on your website that will suit any wedding photographer. Trust me, I know, cause I've been using it for over 11 years. Not only has Squarespace been easy for me to use, but all of its features built into it has grown with my business over the years. When I started selling presets, I was able to do that with commerce. This allows me to do digital and physical products. When I relocated from New York to North Carolina and I needed to see who was visiting my website, analytics really came in and helped me zoom in on where my clients were coming from. And then there's so many other features like contact form, blog pages, Squarespace payments. All of these are gonna fit into your business and help you grow over the years. And not only that, but give you an amazing portfolio that you can show off to potential couples. So if you don't already have a website, I highly recommend signing up for Squarespace. Check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your first website or domain and make a beautiful portfolio for your potential wedding couples. Now that we've gone over the settings, let's go over the secret sauce that makes my photos look absolutely amazing, which is the post-processing during the export stage. This is hands down the most important thing you need to do for your photos. And I don't think a lot of people do it. It does add a little bit of time, but like I said, not sharpening inside of Lightroom and using other programs for your post-processing, your grain additions, your sharpening has really made my photos stand out. So if you've ever used my presets or seen my photos and wonder why are his photos so crispy and why they look so good, it's because I actually edit just a little bit more on the JPEG stage. That's where at the bottom here of my export settings, I have this post-processing, and now we're gonna open in an additional application. And for this, as of now, I'm using Evoto. Evoto has been one of my favorite apps to use for post-processing because most of it uses AI to actually edit your photos. So let's go ahead and export and jump into Evoto to see what I'm adding on that end. So I've been using Evoto for my post-processing for a bit now, and I actually did make a video about it, which I'll also link up above. But basically what I'm doing in this stage, so I have my JPEG, it has a little bit of added sharpening to it, but it's not as crispy as it could be yet. I've made presets inside of Evoto that will automatically add sharpening and also skin smoothing and post-processing on my photos. You can make these presets yourself as well by dialing in your settings. Here on the right side, we can see all of the different things I can change on my photo as far as post-processing, skin smoothing, and I also have options for my sharpening, my temperature, white balance, and all of that kind of stuff. Basically, Evoto can take the place of Lightroom, but I don't use it like that yet. The file systems for Lightroom still works better for me, and also Lightroom works with stuff like Imagine AI. So really, I'm only using Evoto for the post-processing stage. So I have this couple sharpening and grain preset that I've already created, and once I apply that, it adds a little bit of contrast, sharpening to the photo, and it also goes in and it touches up the skin. So you can see here, I have some added contrast and under my grain, we have some added grain. And then under detail as well, I also have my added sharpening. If I go over to the face icon here on the right, we're gonna start applying our touch-ups to the skin. And this can be done for female and male. It's gonna go through find everything it can in the photo and go ahead and apply that. And I can make those changes too. I can turn freckle and acne all the way up. This way it'll really go through and skin smooth. I don't know if you all saw that here, but it cleaned up her face quite a bit. It's getting rid of the under eye bags a bit. And you know, I could be extra and make it just like overbearing, just turn it all the way up. I also still have my healing tool, so I can still come in and get spots if I see them. But the main thing here is it's already doing it for me. And this is the last stage of all my photos that really make everything just look absolutely amazing. It's having this preset set up that took me just a little bit to build myself. 
so that while I export, I can go ahead and retouch these photos without having to spend like hours and hours going through and nitpicking and skin smoothing and things. I made a preset also for my black and white photos. So I like my black and white photos to be extremely grainy. And so this one's gonna give me that film-esque grain and also retouch the skin and it just looks great. So again, sharpening on the JPEG stage is how I get all my photos to look the way they do. And I'm doing that inside of Evoto. Now, once I've applied these presets on my photos inside of Evoto, after that, I'm exporting Evoto for the final export. So it is a two-stage export, but trust me, if you want that extra look on your photos and you want something to help you stand out just a little bit more, you may not use Evoto itself, but going through another program that can help you really add that extra oomph onto your photos is highly recommended. When I'm exporting from Evoto, there's no settings at all. I've already set in what I need, so at this point, I'm just exporting the last stage. These settings are what I've been using for the last couple of years on all of my photos, running them through JPEG Mini to help them be as small as possible for my website, for my hard drives, and getting a really great look out of my photos. If you enjoyed this video that's very straightforward and just talking about the things we need to know as wedding photographers, please let me know in the comments below so I will start making more videos like this. I realized when I was going through my catalog of videos, I actually haven't made any just direct, you know, to the point videos that talk about the basics. So I wanna start focusing on that a little bit more so that your photos can look amazing for your couples as well. And again, if you wanna learn any more about wedding photography, check this playlist out right here. It's gonna have all type of information that's gonna help you be a better wedding photographer, and I will catch you all next time.